So now that we have proved that this sequence from the slides converges to this limit, we've proved this by definition, let's see how it actually works. So in order for this uh, to be the limit of the sequence, it's equivalent to two inequalities. The elements of the sequence are smaller than uh, the limit plus epsilon and greater than the limit minus epsilon. And it means that all the elements of the sequence lie on this between those two lines. So it's like two inequalities this, is, that need to be solved. And if this, uh, this is the limit, then it means that for every epsilon, as small as we please, this system of two inequalities is solvable. And not only that it is solvable, but starting from uh, it's solvable for some n, and it's solvable in the sense that for every n that is bigger than this uh, initial solution, this system of inequalities will, will also hold for every n that is bigger than that. So let's see how it works. So here for epsilon equals 1, we have an inequality that all the elements of the sequence lie between uh, the limit, which is 0 0.6 plus 1. So all the elements of the sequence starting, say, from um, 2 or 3 here, lie between those two lines. They're, they're smaller than 1.6 and bigger than minus 0.4. Okay. And this can be done for every epsilon. And we have in fact shown that there is a way to compute that n of epsilon for which this holds. So let us now, so we take, the, we take this value here, it's 57 over 25 epsilon. Uh, Fleur is actually the integer value and we add one. And so if we were to plot now this location x, which is n of epsilon that uh, we see here, that this value is actually three, right? It's four, uh, five, four, three. So for every uh, for every n that is greater than three, all the elements that are distance from the limit will be smaller than one. And now let's see what happens as we take epsilon to be smaller and smaller. So it decreases, decreases, decreases. And for now, there is no need for this n of epsilon to be bigger because it's still satisfied, right? And so we'll be pinching it and we see that we didn't reach this threshold yet, but this at, uh, n of epsilon has increased, right? And so for every n that is bigger than 4 now, we are going to have that all the elements of the sequence, their distance from the limit is smaller than uh, 0.745. And let us now decrease the epsilon more and let's see what happens as it approaches here. Then this n of epsilon will go a bit farther. So let's see what happens when we decrease it and decrease it and decrease it. And we see that it's jumping ahead of time. And this is because we didn't take the smallest possible n of epsilon. We didn't really solve this inequality, but we've solved a simpler inequality there that is easier to solve, but it's still good enough. I mean, uh, n equals 4 also is also good, but it's not important that we have a smaller maybe n of epsilon here for which it works. We need any n of epsilon for each it works. And so if we were now to take n of epsilon even smaller, then we see that it jumps, right? And so we see that uh, as we pinch it, right? So you can be for sure, even if it falls over here, we only look at n's that are bigger than n of epsilon. So we see once again here that every n that is bigger than this n of epsilon the distance between the sequence element and, and, and the limit is smaller than this epsilon. So we can make epsilon even smaller and we see how it affects. The smaller we take an uh, epsilon, right, the farther we need to go along with the sequence to achieve this, uh, this threshold, this accuracy threshold, this proximity between the elements of the sequence and the limit. And so we can make epsilon even smaller right and then we need to go farther right and so we see for example that for epsilon equals 0 0.025 it is enough to take n of epsilon to be 92 and let me zoom in to convince you that this point lies it's not necessarily it's important what happens after afterwards but you see that this point lies below the below the line so for all the elements of the sequence with index greater than 92, the distance of those elements from the limit 
is going to be smaller than this epsilon. And this can be done, as I've demonstrated to you, for every epsilon. And there's the recipe. You want uh, the distance between the sequence element and the limit to be smaller than this epsilon. Fine, make this computation, compute this natural number, and then all the sequence element with index bigger than this natural number, their distance from the limit, as you can see here, will be smaller from this, uh, than this epsilon. And this can be done for any epsilon. Any epsilon, you have a way of computing n of epsilon, such that for any n that is bigger than this, starting from this point on, the distance of all the elements of the sequence from the limit will be smaller than that. And let's just for fun make uh, epsilon uh, like small 0.05. Okay, so let's see how far. Uh, so we the sign of epsilon has become bigger. So let's see how far do we need to go with the sequence. So there it is. There is the sign of epsilon. It's uh, computed. Uh, I mean, it, it auto corrects. It adjusts dynamically. So we see here that if we zoom in. If we actually zoom in over here, yeah, we see that this uh, sequence element and all consecutive sequence elements fall between those lines, which means that their distance from the limit is, uh, is as desired. And so if you have doubts about this point, let me convince you by zooming in, actually showing that it's drawing it, it's just the plotting that it plots a fat point, but in fact this point is below this threshold. So it holds, and it works for absolutely every epsilon. Uh, for every epsilon, we have this set of epsilon. And finally, let's see what happens for uh, epsilon 00.1. Let's see if still with the 10,000 elements, I, if we can achieve this. Maybe this is too much to ask for, but let's zoom out. No, that's OK. That's OK. So we see, again, so we see how close, starting from uh, index uh, 2,281, uh, uh, all the elements having index bigger than this, their distance from the limit will be less than 1,000. Okay, so I hope that this was convincing enough, because from my experience, student, students are having a hard time of understanding this definition which is quite abstract, and with this epsilon and n of epsilon, and what does it all mean, means. So hopefully now it has become clear enough. So we see that all the elements starting from uh, this threshold over here, their distance from the limit will be smaller than this, and this can be done for any epsilon. For any epsilon, we have this place, and we know how far enough we need to go. So that starting from this place, the distance of all the elements of the sequence from the limit will be smaller than epsilon. And this is the essence of the definition of the limit of a sequence and a convergence of a sequence to a limit.